everything wrong with what you've been taught about money growing up. Let's talk about it. If you're anything like me, you grew up hearing certain things about money that may or may not have been true. And you probably got the same exact rundown as I did, and that's go to school, get good grades, get a good job, have a good career, get married, all that good stuff, the white picket fence in the house, the American dream, right? When you ask about how do I get money, how is it that some people make so much money? Oh, well, you know, they just make a lot of money per hour or they just work a lot of hours. Some people are just really smart. They're either doctors or lawyers or businessmen or women in some cases. But most of the time it's due to professions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break everything down for you. And I'm really going to talk about literally everything that is wrong with what we're taught about money growing up, because there's a lot in there. We're being trained by people who are not necessarily the most financially savvy. And I do believe parents, teachers, and everyone else who tried to teach us growing up really meant their best. But I don't think that everything that we learned is necessarily serving us now as adults. And these are the types of realizations we need to come to as we continue to evolve as people. And as we continue to improve with each and every generation, we have to understand the mistakes that were made as we were kids. And as we become adults, we realize what we didn't know. We need to prepare ourselves to not only get better ourselves with money and get better at building wealth ourselves, but also setting up the next generation for success. Because we talk about generational wealth a lot. Everyone wants to build generational wealth. Everyone wants to be wealthy. Everyone wants to have six figures or seven figures in the bank account, in investments, whatever the case is. But we need to start with what are the wrong things? What are the bad habits that we developed over the years due to past learnings? How many of our financial hardships and how many of our giants in our lives, how many monsters in our lives are of our own making? What are the reasons why at young ages we're up at night thinking about money, wondering, you know, why am I not further along? Why am I struggling to pay my bills? Why am I in debt? So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm extremely fired up and passionate about this topic, if you can't tell. So we're going to jump right into this. So the first thing I want to address in this video is what I just said a bit ago, and that's we're taught about school and getting good grades and then advancing in education. And a lot of times, like for me growing up, like it was really embedded in my brain, not so much by my parents, but mainly by teachers and, you know, coaches and things of that nature. You, you, you got to go to college. That is the way to become successful. And I think you can be very successful going to college or not going to college. And a lot of kids don't really understand that because you don't you don't know what you don't know. You don't really understand like what professions there are in the world. You don't really understand that you can take control of your own things. You don't understand that you can go into a traditional job and work your way up traditionally without having a degree. You can literally just work hard. Like I know people now, young kids, I'm talking 21, 23, who have worked their ways up from being like operators to supervisors over a high level type of operation. I'm talking making like above 80K a year. And this was off of them working hard to get to where they're at. I'm talking fresh out of high school, they're working, 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 putting in the hours, seeking mentorship, asking what they need to do to improve. No college education, no desire for college education and they're successful. And a lot of them are making a lot more. I'm talking like almost double what people are making that I know that have bachelor's and even master's degrees. And that's what we fail to realize. We tell ourselves these things. You must get into debt. You must go to college if you're gonna be successful. If you, if you wanna make above 50K, that's what you gotta do. And that's what we're told and taught. That is what gets embedded in our brains. And the one thing I wish I learned earlier is just look at the people who are giving you the advice. Are they where you want to be? Because I think I said this before, like maybe 50 or 60 videos ago, but I have, I'm friends with a lot of my teachers on uh, Facebook now. So like from high school and even professors from college, I'm friends with them on Facebook now, right? And some of them make posts about how lost they are in life right now. So what I'm saying is, a lot of people in life need guidance and a lot of people feel lost. And these people that feel lost are giving advice to people who are literally the future of the world. If only they were better educated, if only they understood what mistakes were made, if only they understood what we need to do differently for the next generations to come, maybe we wouldn't be so lost. 
Maybe our money would be looking right. Maybe our bank accounts would be looking fat. Maybe we would have better jobs, better careers, better businesses. Because when you take the conventional advice, and I, I definitely took the conventional advice. I don't regret a thing. I think I went the right path that was literally built for me in this world, but I don't think that's a common thing. Because when I talk to friends and even family members, not all of them went in the right path that they wanted to go into. Not all of them like their jobs. Not all of them are fulfilled by what they do for work. And a lot of them don't make what they want to be making at work. And they feel and are worth a lot more than what they're getting paid currently. And if you feel that way, hit the like button because I know I'm hitting some nerves right now. But, you know, this is the reality of life. And when you take certain advice blindly without having the experience and you're thinking like, well, you know, they're adults. Because when I was young, I used to think every adult was rich. I'm like, y'all got cars, y'all got houses, y'all got TVs, y'all got entertainment systems and game systems and you take us out to eat i'm thinking we good but i don't know if you're living paycheck to paycheck or not see what i want to tell you guys is wealth is what you don't see money is what you don't see just because you see things doesn't mean the money is there what it only means is that the money was spent or is being spent monthly to afford that item you get what i'm saying so like, I was talking to my friend the other day, and I'm getting slightly off topic, but I promise I'm going to bring this back in. I was talking to my friend the other day, and we were saying, you know, the wealthiest people in the world, they do stuff like wear the same shirt every day, wear the same clothes every day. They don't ride around in Bugattis and Maseratis and all these crazy looking cars, right? They'll take an economy car anywhere. No one will even know. They don't be worrying about the flashy jewelry. They don't be worrying about wearing the Rolexes everywhere they go. I'm not saying they don't have them, but I'm saying they don't worry about flexing on everybody they see. They don't worry about the gold chains and the diamonds and everything that's super flashy. They don't worry about the Prada shoes and the Gucci belts and the Gucci shirts and the Balenciagas. They have equity. They have ownership. Sure, they might have the latest iPhone, or they might not. They might have five generations back like I used to have before I upgraded recently. But you know what they do got? Shares of Apple stock, which is another thing that we don't get taught. We're taught stuff like, and this obviously doesn't pertain to everybody because some families set their future for success. Some families constantly improve. Some families know the game around investing and making your money grow, but a lot of families don't. A lot of families feel afraid to do such a thing because when we attach time to something and we know that things are going to be fluctuating up and down, up and down, we're afraid to do the things that better our family's future. So we'd rather give our family a good life and we get them the luxury items that they want so they can go to school and look good. We want to give them the Jordans. We want to give them the Nikes. We want to give them the latest cell phones. We want to make sure that they looking good when they go to school, that they look fresh, that they have nice collared shirts. We want to make sure they're not out here looking dusty. You know what I'm saying? We're so pre-concerned with the appearance of looking successful that we forget about actually being successful. We forget about all that. All that goes down the drain. We'd rather show all our friends, all our coworkers, look at how big my house is. I got seven bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms. All of us go to the bathroom at the same time and there'd still be six bathrooms left. You know what I'm saying? Instead of thinking about how can I make this money grow, instead of thinking about, you know what? Ain't but three of us in this family, so we're going to get a nice, respectable house that still looks good, that still has all the nice appliances, but we're not going to pay a meal for it. We're not even going to pay half a meal for it because I'm not concerned with what other people think. You don't ever hear anyone say, I'm going to have my economy cars in the driveway. I'm going to have my respectable house that's a decent size. That's not a freaking mansion just because I make a lot of money a year. No one talks about how they're going to pay off their house a little early by paying a little mm -hmm. extra every month and then stowing away the rest of the money and then getting the kids ready for college and stowing away money there and then investing money for either myself or my kids or both. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the future conversations we need to be having. We don't need to be talking about, you know what is Christmas time is coming up. This is the this is the stuff I'm talking. We're gonna talk about some real topics, and this might take some of you guys off, but this is the real stuff that I wish would take place in more families. It's not just about your education or your job title or how much we think that you make per year. None of that matters if you don't know what to do with your money. None of that matters if you're so deep in debt that you're freaking drowning and you don't know how to get out. None of that matters if you continue to create monsters in your life, giants in your life that you can't combat against because they've overpowered you so much that you're over there in the corner crying. Talking about some woe was me, but you created those monsters. 
and we can say it's not our fault. I get it. You can blame it on anyone who's ever taught you in your life, but it's your responsibility to learn from mistakes and to understand when things in your life aren't working out. When things in a relationship aren't working out, you either figure out a way to work it out, and after trying and trying and trying, you end the relationship. Whenever things at the job aren't working out, you're ready to walk out of that job. Whenever a major in college is too hard, I've known tons of people who've done this, switch majors. And this is no judgment. This is saying that we as humans know what to do when we're in uncomfortable situations that are not working out, that are not best serving us. So we have to do the same thing when it comes to finances. And this whole go to school, get a good job, have a good career, get married, the white picket fence and everything, that's not the way anymore. And another thing that's wrong that we're taught about money is that when we talk about things like investing, when we talk about things like building our own business or even starting a YouTube channel, there's all kinds of negativity and there's all kinds of judgment that comes with it. What are you doing that for? Don't you think you're wasting your time? You're not going to make no money off of doing that. How long are you going to give it? You know, it takes years to do that. Do you have the time to do that? Who's going to listen to you? What do you know? Stuff like that. Like, bro, why is, why is everybody hating? And I'm not saying this stuff happened to me. I'm just saying this stuff happens to anyone who wants to better yourself. You start working out, you start eating clean. Everybody's gonna be like, always eating healthy, always working out. You go to school to better yourself. Oh, he always studying. She's always studying. Don't ever want to hang out with nobody. You choose to cook at home instead of going out to eat. Gosh, cheap. Always cooking at home. There's always a judgment for everything you do. And us as people, we got to get better at that stuff. We got to get better. Like, if, if you don't own any Jordans, but you have a bunch of Nike stock, for example, no one's going to see the Nike stock, but they're going to look at you like, oh, he broke because he don't got Jordans on. That's how it was when I was in high school. I'm not even playing with you guys. I'm dead serious. And it's not like this for everybody. Everyone is predisposed to a different type of, to different types of people. I get it. We went to different places. We're from different areas. We have different cultures. I understand. But there is something that we're all taught financially that just doesn't add up. We're taught that the more things that we have, the more things that we own, the more long money we got, the, the more money we have just in our pockets, in our banks. And that is not true. The truth is the more things you own, the more things own you. The more houses you own, that's the more responsibilities that you have. You might even need to hire a team to manage those properties. So that's even more responsibility because now you got to pay people. Now you're responsible for people's lives. So the more things that you have, the more things on you, the more people you have to answer to. And me, I only want to answer to myself and God. And you know, a thing that I think is really messed up about what we're taught about money is we're taught not to talk about it. We're taught it's rude. We're taught that it's inappropriate. We're taught that it's wrong to talk about money. But if you notice, the more you talk about money, the more you start to understand what's going on, the more you start to really understand what you don't know and what you want to improve in. Like the moment I made this channel about personal finance, because at first it was about personal growth only. Now it's about personal finance. As I was going, I was like, wow, I need to really tighten up on this topic of money, I really need to understand how investing works. I really need to deep dive and practice and learn and continue to improve with a bunch of things financially. I knew I could help with the emotional aspect of money and how to manage money in general, but I could really learn about the statistics. I could really learn about credit cards. I could really learn about just whatever the case was. I knew right then and there I wasn't taught about this, so I'm going to teach myself. I'm going to read books. I'm going to listen to people. I'm going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to seek mentorship. I'm going to figure out a way to learn as much as I possibly can about personal finances to continue to help people. Because when I first started teaching people about this stuff, I was 23. I felt like I was too young. I felt like no one would listen to me. But then people started listening to me because I know what the heck I'm talking about. And that's only done through continuous self-improvement and learning about your craft. But we're taught not to talk about money. We need to talk about the mindset behind bills. We need to talk about the cost of living and how much money you should be spending on certain things, which by the way, I have a budgeting video that breaks all that down. It's a 50, 30, 20 rule video that breaks down how to budget and all that good stuff. And it even has a spreadsheet that you can click my link in the description in that video and it will show you the way I promise. But we don't even talk about that. We don't even talk about budgeting. All we say is, well, 
How do I get better financially? Save your money. But that's not even the only thing. That's but one way of getting good with money. Yeah, you save some money. Yeah, you have some money stowed away. Yeah, you get a nest egg. You get an emergency fund. You get a regular savings account. You might even have a different, you might have two emergency funds. Like, however you want to do it, you can do it that way. But that's not the end of it. That shouldn't be the end goal. And getting out of debt, that shouldn't be the end goal. Because we have to think about how we got into debt in the first place and make sure we never get into debt that deep again. But we don't talk about that. All we do is cry about how stressed out we are that we have bills and we have things to pay. But whose fault is it that you have bills? You rented your apartment. You bought your car. So don't complain to me about gas prices. You knew what it was. You, you got to fill your car. Which one was more expensive, the gas or the car? Probably the car. So I don't want to hear that mess. Don't come to me saying how prices are so high and how wages are so low. If you just looked at how much you were making and then you compared it to how much you were going to be spending, you can simply do the math then and say, I don't got no business living over here. And if I do want to live over here, I'll get a roommate to cut the cost a little bit because I cannot afford to do this right now. And then when you get in a position then, but we don't have these conversations. So we go in blind thinking we know something and we really don't know anything. So we're not really even setting ourselves up for success. And I think, I genuinely think that our parents and our teachers and anyone else who gives us financial advice throughout our lives really tries to do us well with money. But I think there's a greater amount of caution than there should be around personal finances to a point that you try to better yourself financially and it's discouraged. You try to make more money and it's discouraged because they think that's going to lose you money. They think starting your own business. There's ways you can start businesses for free and it really doesn't cost that much money at all to start a business. And you can do it for free if you wanted to start a YouTube channel and then channel your business through there. Like you can do things in a lot of ways now. We have technology that makes things easier for us, but those things even get discouraged. And what we'd rather say is, nope, the only way to, to get paid is to go to school, get your master's degree and keep, keep educating yourself. But then that's creating more career students than anything because now you're 27 without any career experience. So it's easy to get passed up for certain jobs that way that you could have been landing that you really could have added value to. All I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with going to school, I went to school. But what I'm saying is we need to redirect where we're going financially. If we really want generational wealth, we need to teach people the right way. We need to teach people that, yeah, schooling is a way to become successful. And if you go to school, these are the professions that I recommend because if you don't go inside of these fields, there's really not other things you can get into that are gonna pay you what you wanna be getting paid. And that's just facts. And so don't go that way, go this way. Instead, you can, you can learn how to do this. You can learn a craft, you can learn a skill. You can have a job that is your central form of income, but outside of that, you can keep doing what you wanna do and be passionate about it. You don't have to spend your whole week or weekend working on it, but you can make extra money doing it. You can be different, you can do different things. You can invest, you can learn how to invest because everyone's so afraid about the risk that comes with investing. But if you just learn how to invest, I mean, that takes the risk drastically down. Like we know how to do stuff like play basketball and play poker and play video games and stuff like that. But if you can learn how to do those things, you can learn how to invest. And once you learn how to play poker, once you learn how to play basketball, the risk of you losing becomes a lot lower, right? Same thing with investing. Anyway, I'm off my tangent. I just wanted to talk about that real quick today because I'm extremely passionate about that topic. That is everything wrong that I can think of right now at this point in time in this one sitting that is wrong with how we've been taught about money since we were kids. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope this gave you fruitful thought going forward. And I hope you took something away from this video. And that's why this channel exists. I wanna to continue to educate people about money. I wanna to continue to challenge the status quo and the thoughts that most people have about money and just say, okay, well, why do you think like that? And a lot of times it's because of our upbringing and I had to unlearn a lot of things. So it's not like you're alone in this. I've been going through this and I'm still to this day, like every day I wake up, every day I work, every day I move, every day I do anything, I'm always bettering myself and I'm always learning more about finances because there's always more to be learned. So anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.